Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 94 to 98 of section 3 of the Pink Booklet. So this is a question about celiac disease, and um, we're given quite a lot of information about how it works. It's worth reading over that first. Um, question 94 then says, which of the following best explains the occurrence of celiac disease? So in reading over this, there's one sentence that I think um, it stood out to me, and it's the first sentence in the second bullet point. It says, in people with celiac disease, the intestinal wall is relatively permeable so that peptides are not retained within the gut, but can leak across the lining where they stimulate the immune system. And um, without that happening, all the subsequent stuff that's described wouldn't occur. Um, so that's going to be the best explanation, I think, for the occurrence of CD. So that's going to give us an answer of B. The best explanation would be the intestinal permeability to gluten peptides. Then we've got questions 95 to 98, and we've been given the sensitivity and specificity table and the different methods for testing for CD. And we've also got definitions then of sensitivity and specificity. Um, so 95 says specificity indicates a percentage of what? So this specificity, if Let's have a look at what the, the different values are. So TN obviously is going to be a true negative. So that's going to be people that are testing negative and they're healthy. And that's going to be same on the bottom too. But we've also got this false positive, which is the amount of healthy people that are incorrectly diagnosed as sick. So this is all healthy people in the sample, whether or not they test positive or not. So it really is the percentage of people who get a negative, who are healthy, sorry, that test negative. And that, in other words, is healthy people being correctly diagnosed as healthy. So it's the proportion of healthy people um, that are being correctly diagnosed. So 95, therefore, is going to be D. Now, 96 um, is a little bit more complicated. It says of the following, which two methods produce the most false negatives and false positives respectively? So again, we can just have a look at these. So false negatives um, are part of the definition of sensitivity. So the more false negatives you have, the lower the sensitivity. Similarly for specificity, the more false positives you have, the lower the specificity. So say you've got two methods, A and B. Um, if A produces more false negatives, then it's going to have a lower sensitivity. And if B produces more false positives, it's going to have a lower specificity. So if we're going through and comparing all of these um, different combinations, let's have a look if uh, the one on the left has a lower sensitivity and the one on the right has a lower specificity. So with HLA-DQ8, um, we would expect it to have a lower sensitivity than with sonulin, if that would be correct. Um, and of course, the sensitivity of HLA-DQ8 is 10% and of sonulin, it's 100%. So it would produce more false negative, negatives than zon zonulin. So that's correct. What about specificity? So we'd expect zonulin then if this was true, um, if A was the answer, to have a lower specificity. And of course it does. HLA-DQ8 has a higher specificity of 80% and zonulin has a specificity of 30%. So we could replace A then with um, HLA-DQ8 and zonulin, and this would still be true, uh, which means that 96 has to be A. And just to check the other answers, we could go through and compare their specificities and sensitivities, but because that works, um, it saves us having to go through them all. 97 says, compared with HLA-DQ2, using HLA-DQ8 diagnoses a greater proportion of what? Okay, so HLA-DQ2 has um, a lower specificity than DQ8. And don't forget, specificity is these people that are getting, these healthy people that are being diagnosed um, correctly as negative. So DQ8 diagnoses a greater portion of people, or there'll be sort of less false positives if you want to think of it that way. Um, so it diagnoses a greater 
proportion of people with CD as not having the disease. So of course, specificity as we talked about is all these people that are getting negative tests. So this entire denominator of this fraction is all the people that are healthy. So it's the people with CD that don't have the disease. So 97 is going to be D. And then finally, question 98. And compared with the diagnosis using zonulin, diagnosis using the anti-TTG antibody identifies a greater proportion of people with what? Okay, so what's the difference between zonulin and um, anti-TTG? So zonulin has a lower specificity than anti-TTG. Another way of looking at it is that um, anti-TTG has a higher specificity, which means it has a lower false positive rate. Now, if it has a lower sensitivity than zonulin, that means there's going to be a lower false negative rate. So anti-TTG would, would identify a greater proportion of people with CD as not having a disease. So um, that would be a false negative. And because it's less sensitive, then there's going to be more false negatives, if that makes sense, because we've got it on the denominator here. So if you increase the value of this, the value of the fraction falls and then the sensitivity drops, which is why it's lower here than it is here. And what that means then is that the answer for this one is going to be it identifies a greater proportion of people with CD as not having the disease, so giving a false negative then. So 98 is also going to be D. So that was question.